Welcome back to the charismatic voice. It has been far too long since we've heard Dimash Kudai Bergen on this channel, so we're going to take a look at one of his more recent performances of Ika Naide. I thought that this would be an entirely new song, but after doing a little bit of digging, I found that it's actually the same song as Late Autumn, just in the original Japanese language. So I imagine that in the analysis today, we'll take a bit of comparison between the two and probably get into how Dimash's voice has developed. Let's get to it. Immediately, I love the fluffiness that we hear in Dimash's voice. Before, uh, in a previous performance, I remember hearing tenderness there and the quietness, but he's brought an even more air to the sound, both in the onset and the offset. The onset meaning when he begins to to really create a pitch with his vocal folds and the offset meaning when that pitch stops. There's air before and after pitch. Really, really beautiful. Also, the sound quality of this is extraordinary. It's just pristine. Really, really great to be able to hear Dimash in this setting. Do you hear that air before and after? Beautiful, beautiful carry through. Um, I keep thinking about small differences that I'm hearing in this performance versus another one, uh, a couple different ones I've heard of this song. And I think that that airiness that he's bringing into the tone is one of the main things. It's a certain whisper and hush that I hear. Uh, a lot of times when a person has trained more in classical, you've trained to sing without microphones. So you've trained to sing to an audience that could have 4,000 people in it and a full orchestra that you need to sing over. In this case, Dimash, I think, has continually gone more towards pop in his sound. And as a result, he's becoming more and more intimate with the microphone. That allows him to do things like little creaks, little details with the air, and uh, these are details you probably wouldn't hear from an operatic stinger on stage because they'd have to be really overdone in order to project all the way. So I'm hearing uh, this shift in his voice that's going more towards some pop styling, but still has those classical roots essentially. Back a little bit more. That was a beautiful carry through of the breath. And beautiful. Little tiny details in there too. Oh, those little bits. Oh, 
Another thing I'm hearing is uh, even more control of vibrato. I think Dimash has worked on that a lot. If you listen to him in I Am Singer, a lot of times um, a louder sound will be accompanied with vibrato. And I'm hearing here with some of those louder, more full sounds, often holding it straight and then bringing the vibrato in in the softer parts. Um, this is, again, uh, something that would be kind of transitioning more towards a pop stylization would be to have more minimal vibrato overall. Uh, but he's still in the consistency of it. You can tell that there's classical training there. So it's still this really beautiful hybrid of the two. I think it's fascinating how he's adding these little details and shifting the song to be probably what he thinks is the best expression he has available to offer now. It's so amazing to see an artist develop over time and listen to how they want to paint a picture, even in the same song with different words now too, right? The Japanese vowels are probably particularly lovely for Dimash to sing in here. But you get this, this picture that's different of the song. And that, I think that's just a matter of a voice maturing and shifting in ways as he's training it through consistently over time. Oh, let's go back just a little bit. So more. No, that's a much more pop styling without as much vibrato. And even has a little break, a little crack going back in there. His air usage. Oh my gosh! The way he fades that it it really and he's not using a microphone to pull away from his mic there, right? He, it's all him. The way he's fading that it really feels like it fades into nothing it's, he's got so much control of that soft dynamic it's incredible not to mention perfect pitch wow one more time Right there has a more operatic feeling to it. I think that's very intentional with that fullness um, as the song is getting grander here. He also has a lot of rounding to his lips when he's going towards something that's a little more operatic and styling, which is common. That, uh, that rounding of the lips helps to elongate the vocal tract, and that can make the sound a little bit warmer or deeper in quality. In particular, I think he's singing an E vowel here. I believe so, we're about to find out. On his E vowels, a lot of times when you hear that more operatic styling in particular, you'll see that there's a rounding of the lips. Most people don't think about that being in an E vowel while sung, but E with a little bit of rounding there, it's gonna have a deeper sound than E with the lips pulled out really wide. E vowels can be too bright sometimes when sung, especially in certain styles. So that rounding of the lips is very suitable um, to add that extra warmth. Let's see if that is the eval. It is, yeah. We'll go back to it. Right? 
not see those e rounding lips now right it's just so very very apparent i like it very helpful also the way he's taking up space like this that can be very helpful for maintaining low support lungs expanded out for long phrases um, sometimes people will actually do something similar to help with that lung expansion which might look the total opposite but putting your lungs your hands out like this keeps your lungs expanded and if you also hug yourself, sometimes that can also help keep the back expansion of the lungs in the back. So there's a few different ways to go about that. Very important though, to in a recording session like this, continue to use your hands so that you can make full use of expression and also body support. go back just a little bit here there I appreciate that he has some notes up there one of the hardest things to do is to sing a song forever in one language and then switch it to another language <laughs> it's very very difficult um, not only is it difficult on the memory but it can also be difficult on the vowel tracking because you've learned certain vowels and how they feel within your inner resonance and where they sit in that pitch with that particular resonance. So if you switch to another language, often you need to sort of rework this vowel threading where it feels like, oh, maybe that, that pitch feels like it's right here and this pitch feels like it's right here. Little differences like that can actually make a huge difference outside to an audience. Um, so I am excited to see he's got a few notes there just in case he needs to look over. Uh, when you're doing a recording session, there's no reason to not have those notes available. Of course, he's got the song memorized already and they're just available to him to like do a quick check at some time. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> I've done this so many times where I switched and learned an opera first in Italian and then had to sing it in English later or German and then English. Um, and it's, it is a work. <laughs> go back a little bit to this this these last 10 seconds one of the things that he's so good at are these really quick runs I think that might come partly from this his Kazakhstan heritage he has these ornaments and other songs as well that are very quick and uh, they often have a slightly folk or exotic like feel to them and he's brought pieces of that into here and merged it with pop styling. And it's it's just really uh, delicate in a lot of ways how he's combined the two. <laughs> it's incredible.
I remember this section from before too and thinking, wow, how beautiful. It's so gorgeous. It's angelic. It is, it is some of the best counter tenor singing that's out there. I love him in this range. He is able to approach this top with even more, um, more control now. That's really quite amazing. Uh, again, you see the rounding of the lips and you can hear that that warms up the sound just a little bit. And the way he starts his first notes as well has that fluffiness that he had from before too. It's gorgeous. I'm most impressed with how high this goes without losing tone quality. It doesn't sound like it's... Uh, a stretch for him, it's completely under his control. A little further. Right, that start, beautiful. And then straight back into full voice. Wow. <laughs> Look at his stance. This is so common. This is so common. You guys should be seeing this lots on the channel where I talk about singers having a wide stance while they're performing. It helps provide a uh, sense of stability, a sense of singing into a stage or into a floor so that the support system is just all going to sit a little bit lower for breathing. And uh, this is not dissimilar from Bruce Dickinson's horse stance. So just, just you know, this is a cross genre thing. Low, wide stances can be really helpful for supporting the voice. Oh, That's fun. Notice he puts his arm up when he goes up high for that too. Dimash paints things with his hands. That's something he's very good at doing. And it lets him be extra expressive. And he just also has almost beautiful hand choreography that goes with his music. But sometimes it can be really useful to just put your hand up for a high note. Again, that helps with the rib expansion there so that all of your air doesn't go like an accordion and blast out. You would, it's, you don't want a big blast of air for a high note because it's more likely to blow your chords apart and crack that high note. You want to set a very uh, thinner stream, very, very energetic for sure, but not a big splat of air. So this kind of thing keeps your lungs expanded on the side. <laughs> so he does that there. And it's just very successful how he pops up but doesn't go into falsetto, right? He's still staying in full voice here and able to deliver what feels like not a very big jump to most people, but actually is quite a wide and high jump to execute. Sometimes, sometimes I forget how amazing he is in this one particular way. And I'm so glad that this is refreshed right now. 
the ability of Dimash to hold a huge grand note out and then embrace the silence with his audience and come back in softly after a moment is unparalleled. This is extremely difficult to do. People will often miss the tuning. They will lack control when they come back in on that softer note. Uh, they won't be able to sustain the energy in the silence. There's so many things that can go wrong. And he's truly a master of this particular thing. It's incredible. Oh, we're gonna go back just a little more. back one more time. This is just so amazing. <laughs> wow, it even stops my breath. I'm in constant awe of how Dimash's voice is able to capture such a wide range of dynamics and techniques and emotional expression. And he really demonstrates such a wide variety just in this one song. I think it's fascinating as well to hear how he has developed and how he's chosen to develop the expression in this song it's incredible to see an artist grow over time like this. If you would like to take a look at that original analysis I did of the song when he sang it in Chinese, you can check that out over here. And once again, thank you so much for all of your recommendations. I hope to see you all again soon.